Welcome back to Process Dynamics and Control. We're going to be talking about proportional integral controllers today and uh, particularly adding this new term, okay, this integral term. Previously we discussed a proportional only term that has a controller output uh, is going to be equal to a bias, a constant value, plus a proportional term where it's proportional to uh, the error, which is the set point minus the process variable. Um, and uh, now we're going to be adding an integral term as well. It's going to integrate this error over time and add or subtract a certain amount uh, from the controller output uh, based on the integrated time. Um, now one thing to keep in mind is we're going to add a new time constant, which is tau sub i. And that is in the denominator, so smaller values are going to provide a larger weighting to this overall integral term. It also has units of time, and therefore it's always going to be positive. Okay, so um, first of all, we're going to take a look at the error. So if we have a set point change, so this is the set point, and then the process variable that then tracks up, uh, like is shown here with a little bit of overshoot, that instantaneously we're going to have a certain amount of error. Okay, so that's going to be the error. And um, what we're going to do is, with that proportional term, that's going to immediately impact the controller output. And uh, you're going to see a, an immediate response as soon as that set point is changed. Now the integral is actually when it integrates the error, then it's going to take a while for it to respond and it'll have the effect of eliminating offset. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and go to this exercise now. Uh, you can also find um, this exercise if you go uh, to the course website. So I'm just going to go over to the course website and uh, if you go to the integral error worksheet you can pull this up. So what we want to do is, is try to calculate the error versus time. Okay, so we have um, the set point and the process variable and, and what we can do is just pick out select points along this and uh, be able to plot uh, the error versus time and the integral versus time. So we're just we're just plotting the error and the integral um, just for the sake of time on this video. Let me go ahead and just show you uh, the answers to that. So we have if we have this set point going up. Let me go ahead and just write on this. Um, uh, now at this point we're going to have an error of 10. Okay, so up to uh, this uh, 15 uh, on the time scale. Uh, we had a time step starting at 10. Okay, so if we want to integrate uh, this error, uh, let's just say it comes straight up and then over. The area under this um, by 15 minutes is going to be 5 times 10, so about 50. Um, so let me just on the integral, um, on the integral plot here, I'm going to see that at 15, um, get my pen back there, at a value of 15, I'm going to have a value of 50 on the integral. Okay, and then it just goes up from there. So here I had a constant slope, and then here the slope is going to start decreasing. Now this point on the integral is where the error is actually going to become negative, and it's going to start integrating, and the integral is going to decrease. Okay, so between this and this point, that is where the error is negative. Okay, and then this is the error is going to be uh, positive, and then this is error is uh, slightly positive as well. So let's just go back and, and check that out. Okay, so that was, um, you know, this area right here between this point and this point, the error is negative, and so the integral term uh, decreased in value. Okay, so just one more look at the error as well. You can see that the error goes up, stays at 10 for until uh, time equals 15, and then goes negative and then back positive again. Okay, so these are the terms that we're looking at with our PID equation. And uh, let me just go back uh, to this. So we have this, um, this error um, as we showed in Excel. Okay, and uh, it's going to change uh, size and sign with time. 
And this integral term in the proportional integral controller is essentially just going to sum up that error. Okay, so even if a small error persists, the sum total will grow over time and that amount will be added uh, to the controller output. Okay, so um, you know this is another way to do the integral is to just you know do blocks and add up those blocks. Uh, the area under uh, the curve is is what you add up. Okay, so here you had an integral sum of 135. There you have negative 34, and there you have 7. So by the time it stops accumulating the integral, you could just add all of those up. Okay, you could just add all of those up. So that would be uh, at this point the integral would be 100 and and one, and then you're going to add seven more. So at steady state, this integral term is going to steady out to be about 108. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's and, and here we had the the 108 as well. Okay, so um, this is like a moving bias. Okay, so it uh, is going to correct for that persistent offset. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind that PID, uh, for PID controllers, the PI form is probably the most widely used in, in industry. Uh, most people don't leave, uh, don't put a derivative term on there, only in special cases where you want to try to limit the amount of overshoot. Okay, um, also uh, the integral action tends to increase the oscillatory behavior. Um, because it could make it more aggressive. And the KC and the tau i are going to interact with each other. As you increase KC, you can see that this term will get uh, larger. So it's, it can be challenging at times to come up with the best uh, tuning possible. Okay, so this is just a, uh, a grid that shows uh, the value of KC and tau i. Now in this case, I'm increasing the value of tau i, but as, as you remember, um, the tau i is in the denominator, okay, for the, the integral term. And so as I increase this, this whole term gets smaller. And so it becomes less aggressive uh, to uh, correct for that persistent offset. Okay, so this is less aggressive as I increase, um, as I increase tau i, and it becomes more aggressive um, as I decrease tau i. Okay, but it's the opposite with kc. Um, I have my kc times e of t. That's the proportional term. And then here's my integral term uh, right down below. Um, as I increase kc, um, it's going to respond more quickly to air. And I'm going to see, uh, in this case, where I have lower tau i, and a higher KC, it's going to oscillate, be very aggressive. And in this case, where I have a lower KC and a higher tau i, it's going to be the least aggressive of those. Okay. Um, so this is the integral term, uh, just as a, a brief introduction. Um, now, one of the things that we've got to watch out for, let's say I have my set point at an unreachable value. Okay, so it comes up, but it can never quite reach. Uh, and I have a persistent offset because my controller action, let's say my controller action on a valve went up, up to 100% open, uh, and I was asking for a set point that was higher than it could achieve, let's say a flow on a, uh, a flow line. Um, you know, this term, it would then, if I left it like that for an hour or more, it would start to wind up. It would accumulate this integral term, and even if I were to drop then the set point down below uh, where the process variable is, it would s this manipulated variable or the controller output would stay saturated at 100% until I would have equal area going back down and then it would come down again. Okay, so that's undesirable. When I move the set point, I want it to respond immediately. And so the way to, to overcome that wind up is is um, is to put in some measures to prevent that uh, that wind up uh, or reset wind up of, of the integral term. Okay, so um, so one of the things that we can do with anti reset wind up, we can uh, you know limit the value of that integral term. Most times in most algorithms, they just stop accumulating the integral term 
if the manipulated variable is saturated. So a manipulated variable might be saturated, let's say for a valve, I know that has to be zero to 100%. And if for whatever reason, uh, the value of my controller output is uh, zero or 100%, then it just stops accumulating that integral um, and, until it, it comes back to a, a more acceptable level. Okay, so, um, Okay, so one of the things we want to also talk about is controller performance. Um, not just, uh, you know, when we're tuning these PI controllers, we want to try to understand what is good performance for a PI controller. And uh, we're going to just use a couple pieces of terminology here. First of all, we have rise time. When the PV, so this is our PV, and then this is our set point. Okay, so when from the time of the step, that's uh, going to be 30, okay to when the PV first reaches the set point okay so that's right here where it first reaches the new set point that's going to be the rise time okay so that's about uh, 42 minus 30 that's about 12 okay about 12 minutes for the rise time the peak time is the time of the first peak so same thing as, as rise time but just when you get to the first peak and that is going to be about um, 52, okay, minus 30, and that's about 22 minutes. Okay, and then you have the overshoot ratio. Now, um, I'm going to define A, B, and C here. Uh, A is going to be the distance of the set point change. Okay, and then B is going to be the size of that first peak. And then C is going to be not, not this one, Okay, but it's actually going to be the uh, second, uh, you know, positive peak um, on the same side of the set point line as the first peak. Okay, so uh, overshoot ratio is just B, this first amount that I overshot the set point, divided by this total set point change, which is A. Okay, so that's going to be the overshoot ratio. Um, in this case, it gets about up to uh, 34, um, 34.5 minus uh, 30, um, and I'm going to divide that by you know it's 30 minus 20, so about 10. Um, okay, so I've got about a 4.5 divided by 10, or about 0 0.45. Sometimes we say 45% overshoot. Okay, 45% overshoot for the or 0.45 overshoot ratio. Okay, decay ratio is successive dampening of the uh, of the peaks, and so it's going to be this uh, increment C divided by this increment A. That's about uh, probably about 0.2 or so. Okay, settling time is when the PV remains within 5% of the the set point. Um, now 5% of the delta. So uh, take your A and go 0 0.05 and then you draw your bounds here and when this PV stays within that, the first time that it enters that and then stays within that 5% band, that's when we call the settling time. Okay, so just to review, here uh, are the, um, you know, the, the terminology that we're going to use to define good control. Okay, and then uh, just some times there, uh, somewhat close to what I had calculated there, and um, just some of the results with the, the uh, performance analysis. Okay, so um, just one thing that, uh, you know, if the, a couple criteria um, are not independent, if you have, um, you know, large decay ratio, then you're, <coughs> you're probably, <coughs> excuse me, Probably going to have a long uh, settling or uh, not have a long settling time. Very short. Um, if the rise time is long, then it will probably have a long peak time. So you don't need to use all of these criteria in designing um, and evaluating the controller performance. Okay, if there are no peaks, um, some of these don't apply. Um, I think that uh, we can't use a lot of these overshoot or time to uh, first peak. And that's it.